To date, the U.S. has experienced 102 million reported cases of COVID-19 and a little more than 1 million deaths from this global pandemic. Not to be completely overshadowed, more than half a million Americans have died of AIDS and 1.1 million people are currently living with HIV in the United States. However, with a global focus on COVID research and policy, HIV prevention efforts have gone underutilized, harming racial, gender, and sexual minoritized patient populations who have disproportionately been impacted the most by these two pandemics. And it is incumbent on primary care practitioners like myself to acknowledge the macro issues at the root of these disparities. This research relies on several theoretical frameworks to help us design this research with our values in mind, but also understand the data relationships we see. One of them is the social ecological model, which explains how there are many simultaneous factors shaping our opportunities for health. We also rely on the R4P dimensionality model because it brings a health justice lens to understanding trauma and harms of the past while restoring hope and trust in the present. And because of our anti-racist lens, we must apply critical race theory and queer theory to centering the experience of racial, ethnic, sexual, and gender minoritized patient populations. And of course, it was important to us that we do use a design approach that is iterative and flexible so we can adapt as we analyze emergent themes. Given that we want to center the stories of our target population, we relied on paired interviews of six PCPs and 11 patients who responded to identical questions. And we corroborated our qualitative data themes through a scoping review of 61 HIV articles and 82 COVID articles to understand what barriers and facilitators to care are represented in the literature. The patient and PCP stories also contribute much that did not get taken up in the peer-reviewed scholarship, further justifying the need to begin with what historically excluded groups have to say about their health. Some key takeaways of our research revealed that as practitioners, we are largely unaware of patient experiences and perceptions of care. We often attend to individual, institutional, and policy-based facilitators to care while overlooking those facilitators that are interpersonal and community-based, but that we are aligned with our patients on our assessment of community-based barriers to said care. We also discovered gaps in our medical training, which presented learning opportunities in areas such as restoring patient trust through a health justice approach, our role in shaping community narratives on HIV and COVID stigma, why PrEP belongs in primary care settings, how we can share power with our patients, developing language and literacy access, combating both our professional burnout and emergent infections, and understanding state-level HIV opt-out testing and screening guidelines. As a Black woman patient on the 2-in-1 National Advisory Board, i like to close out this presentation with the significance for racial and social economic equity. PCPs must be structurally competent to recognize the factors that contribute to the delayed identification of HIV and COVID risk. There must exist capacity building opportunities and counter messaging for PCPs to use within their clinical practice that really disrupt structures of power working against minoritized patients. Thank you so much for joining us for the two in one HIV and COVID screening and testing model presentations.